here with you. This is my friend, Anatita. Is this the right? Okay, take your yeah. mask off so they can see you. And she has agreed to do a testimony for us today, and she is scared to death, so please pray for her as she's doing this. <laughs> Hi, my name is Anatita Nisa Kwasira. I am 14 years old. Uh, some facts about me. I'm a scholar at DHPS. I love Netflix. I have the weirdest phobias. <laughs> And I hate fish. <laughs> Today I'll be talking how prayer and fasting helped influence me. I was fasting fizzy drinks. I couldn't fast coffee. Uh, originally, <laughs> originally I wanted to fast fish, but everyone told me no because I don't eat it. This prayer and fasting of February has helped me spot out fake friends from real friends, like friends that will help you in your time of need or just when you need was when you just need you when they are helping when you're helping them. I got a Bible verse from first Psalm forty one verse nine. Sorry if my words are mixed up. I mix up words sometimes. It's okay. It's okay. Even even my close friend, someone who I trusted, who one who shared my bed has turned against me. Even my friend which I trusted can betray you when you don't, yeah. Some phrases I got from the internet, yeah. A friend in need isn't a friend indeed, and find a can't a dead man in, they're not, yeah. Sorry, my German isn't Germaning today. But thank you. <laughs> So I'm doing a testimony in one language. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's been uh, year four of no breakthrough, right? And, and uh, come to the beginning of this week, I was thinking, God, what are you trying to say? Are you saying that I'm praying for the wrong things? Um, are they, the, I'm praying for the people that I'm praying for, um, asking, um, that God would not only give me opportunity, but they would have, um, their hearts would be moved to where they can hear Jesus and, and, and get to know who he is. And I've prayed and prayed and prayed, and I've shared in, this, in these moments, and nothing has happened at all. So I thought, this week I thought, God, what are you trying to say to me? Is there something that I'm doing, something that, that I've missed these last couple of years, these last four years now. Is there something that I've missed? Any, it's always at the end of every, of every one of those months I thought, yeah, I felt closer to God, but there was no breakthrough. There was nothing incredible happened. So this, this week, uh, I remember going over to, to visit um, my dad, and I went with uh, my younger brother, and I watched this contrast between uh, the way I talk to my dad and the way my younger brother talks to my dad. Um, I'm the oldest, he's the youngest. Now, I don't mean to be mean to the youngest, but the youngest often feel like the world. <laughs> There's another oldest child agreeing with me yeah, that the youngest know that they adore, that the, that the world just loves them. Like everything will just fall into place. Like the youngest knows I am the cherished one. And there's a difference in the way that I speak and the way that my brother speaks. I, I am weighing every word. I'm thinking about what I'm supposed to say, what I'm not supposed to say. And I remember youngest are always busting through, saying whatever comes to mind, right? You know that show, Kids Say the Donnest Things. I'm sure the whole show is just filled with the youngest child, all of them. But um, also, I, I am married to someone who is the youngest child. And when she talks to God, there's this freedom that she has. She knows she's loved and cherished by God. Not only does she know, she, she, she sometimes says to me, you know, I think God really thinks I'm funny. He, he loves with me and he is so entertained by me. And I think that's ridiculous, right? We're here to, to, to serve God. Yes, we can know him and he's our father, but what of this laughing with and all this stuff? And I realized that that's, that's maybe what God was trying to teach me in all of this time, is that I need to, and this is, for me, this is the, it's, it's, it's not the beginning of a journey, but it's the continuation of a journey. We feel, I feel like the, the areas in our walk that, um, that you 
uh, get through and you, you, you realize this is, this is something that's wrong and you work through it and it comes through relatively quickly. And there are other things that are kind of incremental. And we often feel like we finished with it and God reveals another layer of it. So this, this month he's telling me, or well, this week he was, he was telling me, I'm just trying to let you know that I actually cherish you, that I enjoy you, I, I want to hear your thoughts, I want to commune with you. And even as we've been going through the, the, the uh, Bible reading plan, when you read the Psalms and you read uh, David as he talks to God, he doesn't hold anything back. And the people who often don't hold anything back are those who know, who have this completely trusting relationship with God, that God loves me and that I can come and I can speak to him, where God says things like reason with me. That's a God who's inviting you, who's saying, I love you, be confident in the fact that I love you and come to me as you are. So for me, this um, is gonna be the continuation of a journey. I know that God loves me as a father, but now it's to learn that God actually likes me. And that is my journey. Thank you. Sunday school, your Sunday school teachers adore you. And this is your time. So Sunday school, if you can head out to all your different areas and let's stand and continue to worship. Good morning, everyone. And please pray for me too. <laughs> then, no? yeah. Please. So Jesus has been sharing his heart with me um, since last year's month of prayer and fasting because he knows I am one of his slower learners. Um, my family and I have been going through an incredibly tough time this past year. And to be honest, there were many days when I didn't think we were going to survive this. It's hard when you look at your life and it's nothing like you expected. So what I found I've been doing was I was tying my hope to specific outcomes. For each one of the many mountains I faced, I asked God for a specific outcome. And I begged God and I cried more times than I can remember. And I waited patiently for these specific outcomes. And they never came. No breakthrough mm -hmm. at all. Actually, it became worse. And one day, Jesus took hold of my face. <laughs> and he said, little one, I need you to tie your heart, to your hope to my heart instead. Don't tie your hope to specific outcomes. Tie your hope to my heart, because my heart towards you is always good. Um, when God doesn't answer our prayers, in the way we expect him to. When he doesn't answer, full stop, and the storm rages and rages on, we have to move to a place where we must trust that God knows something that we don't. Even when what is right in front of you is not making sense at all, and it is hurting, and it is confusing, even when what is right in front of you um, that you don't agree with, that it, it, is, it, it can't be good. You don't agree with this, it can't be good. Even then, you can trust God's heart because his heart is good. C.S. Lewis uses a beautiful word picture where he says, we are like houses that are being renovated by God himself. We think we know what repairs need to be done. In my case, only small repairs. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and then God comes and he starts knocking down the walls. 
and you think, is this my life now? Um, this place of the crumbling walls. You look around the debris and you, the destruction and you can't believe that this is good. But we don't have to understand God to trust in him. We can trust his heart. And C.S. Lewis says this, we are confused and feeling the pain of this level of rebuilding. But maybe his vision is much different than ours. You thought you were being made into a decent little cottage, but he is actually building a palace. He intends to come and live in it himself. We see a cottage, God sees a palace. We see only what the human mind can imagine, but God is building something we cannot even fathom. And I want to declare it in my life and over my situation and each one of your difficult situations today. God is building something that we cannot fathom. It is not what we wanted, but it is so much better. Our family did survive last year. We didn't die. The season is not yet over, but they are glimpses of godly outcomes. Not my specific outcomes, God outcomes. We need to tie our, our hope to the heart of God. Thank you. Good morning, New Song Family Church. My name is Valen van Weyck, and I've been asked to share what this February 2021 fast meant to me and also just give a brief overview of my own personal journey in the Ministry of Prayer and Fasting. I will start by saying that fasting has been an essential part of my life and my walk with God even as a young believer. In those early years, I realized how imp important it was to hear the voice of God and to seek His direction for my life and to just live a life that is pleasing unto Him. During those early years, I started my journey by doing weekly 24-hour fasts. These fasts were more self-examination and consecration fasts. When I was doing this type of fast, I would always say, God, I need, to do you, I need you to do a spiritual checkup on me. Are there things in my life that do not please you? And I would cry out and say, Lord, change me. One day, I walked into a bookshop and I saw a little soft cover book written by Evelyn Christensen. And that little book was called, Lord, Change Me. I actually wrote a date in this book the 22nd of January, 1988. So today, it's probably exactly 33 years ago that I started on this journey. And it has been very exciting as I saw um, the changes that God was do were doing in my life. As my faith grew to believe God for more, the 24-hour fast changed into a three-day, a seven-day, a ten-day fast. And for many years, I was doing the 21-day Daniel fast. I felt spiritually dry and felt that my prayers just didn't have that cutting edge anymore. I would pull myself aside and spend time with God in fasting and prayer. This private spiritual discipline began to produce great spiritual rewards in my life. I really started to grow spiritual muscle that I didn't have before. Yes, I use the word spiritual muscle because that is exactly what fasting does. It makes you tough in the spirit. And though fasting deprives the body from physical nutrition, it adds great conviction for repentance and depth in the inner spiritual man. On this journey, 
I saw how God connected me with other prayer and fasting networks, not only locally but also internationally. There was a year where I had the opportunity um, to travel with a, a, prayer, a local prayer group um, together with um, a young lady whom I discipled, her name was Colestina. We went with this um, prayer group all the way to Malaysia to attend a prayer conference where I saw how God stretched me and gave me the opportunity to experience how the prayer and fasting movement operates in many different cultures. Um, I saw the unity that the Lord um, could form um, even in a different culture in the prayer and fasting movement. This greatly encouraged me, continued to build my faith, continue uh, to strengthen me to believe God for more. It was about two or three years ago that the Lord laid it on my heart to do a 40-day fast. I knew that this would be difficult, but I believe that if God impressed upon me to do this, that he will also give me the strength to see it through. At the end of this 40-day um, fast, I was faced with a very difficult task and I had to make a decision whether I will follow Christ's example or whether I will just stay in my comfort zone and not be overburdened with another person's um, problem. I knew today if I didn't, if I wouldn't have done that fast, that most probably I would have made a different decision that would have had a completely different outcome and I would have missed a marvelous opportunity to bring God honor and to make a difference in someone else's life. This year, February 2021, this fast also had great spiritual meaning to me. The Bible says in the book of Ezra, chapter 8, verse 21, that when we fast, we raise up a foundation for many generations. I saw this um, promise in God's word also becoming true for me this year. This year I fasted with my son Mark as an accountability partner. We prayed together for the prayer request that would come through from the church. We prayed together for our church leadership and just for us as a family. And I know in my heart that this is a blessing, a generational blessing that God is passing on into my own future generations. Now every year when New Song Family Church declares a fast, something also happens in the spiritual realm. A foundation is being built for future generations. I know that God is building here a house of faith. And I know that every family that participates in the February fast every year is raising up a foundation for their own generation. And I know that the prayers that are raised up in this place will not return void, but will accomplish God's purposes and will cause his kingdom to come and his will to be done in our church, but also in our own individual lives. Well, I hope today that my testimony has brought you encouragement so that you can pursue your own journey of fasting and prayer and that God will continue to strengthen your faith and that you too will grow in believing him for more for your own life. Thank you and God bless you. Um, good morning church, my name is Arafat, um, also known as Ara. So I was asked to share a testimony um, about the prayer and fasting that we've just did throughout the month of February. Um, so 
the most um, um, crucial thing that I have learned um, that, I, that I feel God has shown me is um, or that God has changed within um, my life throughout the first two months, not just this month, but from January, is um, my praying habit. You know, because most of the time I was just like, um, okay, fine. Um, um, someone asked me for, for like a prayer request or maybe I want to give thanks to the Lord. I would include these things in like, okay, I'll pray for it like when I have quiet time tonight, you know, because I'm just all caught up in my day or I'm on my phone. But I realized when I had um, just a quick introspection, you know, when I looked into my life, like um, I realized that every time someone asks me, you know, like, um, would you pray this with me or um, I'm going through this, please pray with me or give thanks to the Lord, whatever it is, I would say, you know, I'll pray with you. And that's, that's where it ends. It, it, it never, I never go on because I forget. So um, this year I decided I was gonna, um, I took a week off like where I was like, okay, fine, I'm gonna like shut down social media because I was spending so much time on my phone. And then um, the more I spent time, the more I realized, because now I'm not using my phone, which I use all the time. That means, that meant that I was now praying while walking, even writing an application with work, you know, I could pray, I could, even something as small as, Lord, I praise you for this opportunity, Lord, I praise you, you know, I could just like, just corner myself and just spend time with God. Even if it's like in a room full of people, I'll just, you know, like just put my focus on God. And that has, that has changed everything. So um, when I was receiving text messages from JP, it wasn't a thing of like, okay, um, you know, um, this is a prayer request or pray for this or thank God for this. It, it wasn't a thing of like, I'll pray later at night anymore. For me, it was more like, you know what, I'm reading this and I know what's going on. So I'm going to pray about this right now. So I, I feel like now I can actually proclaim or um, the name of Jesus in my mouth is not just nine o'clock at night. In, uh, like, it's not just when I have my quiet time. It's throughout the whole day. Cause I'm, <clears throat> cause I'm constantly like, if I just think of something, you know, like where I like, I want to give thanks to God. I want to um, ask God for something. I do it in the moment because I realize that you know God is listening to me anytime. It's not just when I have quiet time when I have my own thing going on. So for me, that that's been the most important thing that I have um, um, that I have um, learned and that has changed for me like so far this year. And the other thing is, um, you know, reading um, the daily prayer requests, you, 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 you read and you're like, people actually talk about these things to other people, you know, like that's how open some of the people in church are. And, and for some, it's a thing of accountability. And for some, it's a thing of, you know, like, I don't need to do this thing alone. I have a whole church family around me that can be praying for me. So in my mind I was always just like there's there are just certain stuff that I just keep to myself and and no matter how hard it is I'll just keep it to myself but then reading that people are actually just you know trusting God with what they are trusting people with you know like you know God I'm, I'm gonna tell this person what I'm going through if it's for accountability but as long as it's for like you know for your glory or or as long as I have people around me that are praying like with me so now my perspectives on you know just keeping stuff to myself also changed you know it, it happened this month where i'm like there are just some things that i can talk to people about it's not just about uh, what will people think you know it's just yeah like it's it, it i have this new perspective on 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 just sharing um stuff with people around me and 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 actually reading um what what the prayer request entailed or or how we um or, or what we gave thanks to, you know, just just got this whole new perspective that, you know, I, I have people around me and the journey is not just me alone. You understand? It's, it's a relationship between me and, 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 and God, but then there are fellow brothers and sisters alongside me that are also just um, trying to live for Him. So um, that's my testimony in short. Um, I hope you guys have a blessed Sunday. Enjoy the break the fast.
thought is, you know, God hasn't answered most of the prayers you've been praying, probably. Uh, some of you have had answers. I had a few answers to my prayer during this month, but most of my prayers still have not been answered. And so what do we do now? And I think, you know, you've heard this from all these testimonies. We continue on. We continue on praying. We continue on begging God for these things that, that uh, we're asking him for. Or we ask him to change us, that we will become more in line with what his will is. So change the circumstances or change us as we're praying. In Luke eleven nine, in the uh, New Living Testament, I love the way it says it. It says, uh, Jesus says, and so I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. It's an ongoing process. We don't just finish it today. We keep on asking, we keep on seeking, we keep on knocking. We keep approaching the throne of grace as that dearly beloved little one that Rico's talking about because God has given us that right to do that. I don't know why we have so many different stories in one room of joy, of sorrow, of things that, of hopelessness for some of you. I don't know why God does that with all of us, that in one room just this size, everybody has another story from the other person. On uh, last week, well, last year, Brian and I, in the end of October, uh, had our 30th wedding anniversary. We were in the States then, and everything was escalating, and I think Brian cooked a steak or two outside on the grill, and we made a salad, and that was our anniversary, and we said, when we get back to Namibia, we'll celebrate it properly. <clears throat> and I had saved money in 2019. I'd saved that whole year stuffing money aside so we could do something fun for our 30th wedding anniversary. And um, so last week, uh, great prices in Namibia. Uh, if you travel, it's just incredible things. We were the only people at a lodge, uh, a beautiful lodge in the desert, and got to do that. And then we got to go hot air ballooning. I have never done that in my life. And uh, it's always been a dream of mine. It's half price right now. And so with this money we'd saved, we had the money to be able to do something like that. So on Thursday, Brian and I uh, got to go up over the Namib Desert in this hot air balloon, and it was spectacular. So while we're up there floating over this gorgeous desert of this country, of course, we just continuously are praising God. Just, you just cannot help but just going, God, you're amazing. Look at what you've done. You're so creative. All the colors, the colors are spectacular. The green right now in the desert, who would have ever thought that? I've never seen Namibia look like this. So, so beautiful. And I just kept saying, oh, God, look what you have done. You are amazing. My, I felt like this body got so full, just overflowing full of joy as we were there. We come down, and, and uh, of course, you get to have breakfast in the middle of the desert, and this beautiful breakfast sitting in this, the sand dunes. How incredible. And I'm getting to be with my sweet husband. How wonderful. We get back, get into our car. My phone, as we start getting someplace with service, starts bing, 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 binging. And I start looking at it. And while I was floating in the desert and having a praise time, my sister's father-in-law's heart stopped. I've known him my whole life. His name's Jack. Heart stopped. They put a ventilator on him. And they said, no, we're not going to do that. So at 3 that afternoon, the whole family was going to come together and say goodbye to Jack. So Thursday, a friend of mine that I've known my whole life, my brother-in-law, who I've known my whole life, his father passed away on Thursday. At the same time, I look at my phone, and I'm in a group of a missionary that we love so very much from Lesotho, and he's dying of cancer in the States right now. 
I hope not dying, fighting it like crazy, but it goes up and down and up and down, and Thursday was a bad day, a really bad day. We have three missionaries not doing well from COVID that have been air vaced into Nairobi, Kenya. So I'm getting the messages from wives telling me it's not going well today. While I'm floating in a balloon, praising God, other people are grieving. They're scared. They're losing. I don't know why we do this. I just know, like you have heard today, we have such a good God. We press into this God. We press into him when we want to praise him because he's glorious and we see his beauty. And we press in when our heart is breaking beyond repair. We press in to him. The day after our hot air balloon ride, we drove to the Sosis Flay. Oh my goodness, the water. The water. And as I stood in front of, looks like a lake, and the water's lapping at my feet. I have begged God, like you, for years for rain. And as I stood there, I raised my hands and I said, you've done it. You have given rain to this nation. You are so good, God. And I praised him again. Look around. We can get so caught in our different stories that we forget that he's such a good, good God. When your heart is breaking, he's such a good God. When the waters are pouring out of the heavens, he's such a good God. When you don't know what to do, he's such a good, good God. Keep on seeking. Keep on asking. Keep on knocking. Press in to God. He will never let you go. This is not the end. As Brian says, it is just the beginning. Keep on. Go strongly forward in what has happened this month in your life. Don't think it's over. It's just starting. Get excited about what God is doing in your life, in the lives of people you're praying for. Don't grow weary of praying. Don't grow weary of asking. If you haven't seen someone you love know Jesus yet, keep on asking. Keep on telling. Keep on sharing Jesus everywhere you go. And keep on praising his name. Praise his name. We have such an amazing, amazing God. Whatever part of this story that you fit in, our God is still good.